And since you're standing, having done all to stand, keep on standing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ready for the word? Everybody with your Bibles in your hand. Repeating after me in good voice today. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for taking us to where we need to be. We need your help. And we rest in you. God, we thank you for what's freely given to us of the Holy Spirit. Now bless the hearers that we go on to be doers of the word. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Last installation of this series, Honors Rewards. Honor Rewards. Lesson three. And today we're going to talk about claiming the reward. Claiming the reward. Say that with me. Claiming the reward. And I want you to listen uh, uh, attentively. There's some, some good things and some good stuff. Not like I don't have good stuff to say in other, other instances, but it's, it, it, it certainly is some stuff to take note of in the message today. In, in, in many instances, to get to the reward or get to the rewards of honor, you must push past feelings. Push past feelings. What can feelings do? Feelings can strain, cancel and even separate you from the reward that you had otherwise worked for. It's bad when you cancel your own self out. Unadjusted negative feelings bring on a spirit of cancellation. Unadjusted negative feelings bring on a spirit of cancellation. Never forget that the goal of the enemy is to steal, kill, and destroy. And the word, while kill is bad and steal is bad, the word destroy means utterly obliterate, which means dismantle, destroy, uh, uh, tear apart down into pieces that can't be put back together again. Destruction. I think of a bomb when it hits. It doesn't come to just blow you aside or push you to the other side of the room or the other side of the city or other side. When it hits, it, 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 it completely decimates. It blows things to bits. And that's what the destroyer wants to do when attitude interrupts your process of getting a reward. Did you hear that? He wants to decimate so that you won't receive. And how many of you know, I want to receive. I want to receive my reward. 
and I don't want it to be lost. I don't want it to be stolen, and I'm not going to die before I get it. Okay. Our lesson scripture today, and this is the primary place we'll be for the whole lesson. Mark 7, 24 through 30. Mark 7, 24 through 30. An interesting passage, a familiar passage, one that we preached on before with other emphasis in other ways. We've heard other people preach on it, but today we're going to talk about it in a different way. Here begins the reading. And we're talking about Jesus in, in a city, in a place that's not exactly in his home region. And here is that reading. From there, he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted no one to know it. Everybody say that with me. Wanted no one to know it. That means he was in seclusion or trying to be in seclusion. But he could not be hidden. Everybody say that with me. But he could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth. And she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. She kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first. For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. Everybody still with me? Stay with me. And she answered and said to him, Yes, Lord, even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumb, from the, from the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, For this saying, go your way. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. There is the whole scope of the story. But let's go back and unpack it. He entered a house and wanted to, no one to know it. Jesus had traveled some 50 miles from, uh, 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 from where he normally is all the time in, in Jerusalem and Nazareth and Galilee and all of those areas. To, to a city that, that, that is known as Gentile territory or non-Jewish territory or non-sanctified Jew territory. This was unusual in Jesus' ministry because his focus was on the lost sheep of Israel. Jesus was sent to the lost sheep of Israel. And every time I read that, I say, huh. He was sent first to the lost sheep of Israel. He was sent to Jewish people. Amen? Amen. But this verse also showed that Jesus did not obey Jewish traditions that said a faithful Jew would have nothing to do with Gentiles and would never enter a Gentile's house. But the Bible says he could not be hidden. Come on. That's a glorious principle. The one thing about Jesus, when he shows up, he can't be hidden. And you ought to be glad about that, that he's not hidden. Amen. That means the point that he's not hidden means that you got access to him. He could not be hidden. Anytime Jesus is present, he finds a way to touch lives because he can't be hidden. Even when he wants to hide, he can't hide. Come on. 
Aren't you glad about that? When he comes in, somebody knew. And this woman who was a Gentile, not necessarily a Jew of Jew, knew him. She was Greek. But she knew about Jesus. And she trusted him. She came and fell at his feet. She kept asking him to cast a demon out of her daughter. This woman is a picture of an intercessor. She is an intercessor. Why? Because of a word that it says about her that she kept asking. People that intercede keep asking. They don't let up. They don't ask once and look for a result. They keep asking until they get a piece about what it is they've been praying about. How many of you know I'm right about that? If you're a parent interceding for your kid, you pray until you get a peace in your gut about them or you get instruction from God of what to do next. Amen. And, and, and after you pray for a while, then the phone will ring. Hey, Ma, it's me. Hey, Dad, it's me. I'm all right. But because you've been praying, your prayer was out, and you didn't pray at one time. How many of you just pray over some things one time? And you're done. How many of you pray over stuff two times and you're done? How many pray over stuff a lot of times? You're still not done. You, you're still praying about it. But that's what an intercessory heart will do. It prays and prays and pushes and pushes until it gets results. So we get a peep at this woman by what she did, and she constantly interceded for her daughter. She interceded before she had known where Jesus was. She didn't start when she got to Jesus. Did you get that? You have to pray until the help comes. Let me give you some things. What are some key things about an intercessor that we see in this woman? She saw and knew God's heart. We saw that about her. She saw and knew God's heart. In this case, her daughter. You, for some reason, she understood that, that healing was something that God wanted for her daughter. And you must understand that healing is what God wants for you. Now you can commiserate with it and, 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 and want to carry it as a badge of honor. But if you want to get healed, know that that's God's will for you. Intercessors are relentless and pursue in prayer. She kept asking. Intercessors pursue. Intercession comes from intimate relationship. She was a Gentile, but she knew God. Intercessors feel the pain of those they pray for. I'm not going to call the name, but recently I was praying about somebody getting a job. One of our members. I was praying about somebody getting the And you know what? I couldn't give him the job. But what did I do? Because of the need and because of, of, of the way the person's voice sound, my heart entered into my prayer in, 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 in in, in an unusual way to me. That, and, and I took note of it this way. And there was a push inside of me as if I felt the pain they were going through in the jobless situation. You can't help people until you enter their pain. And some of you want to pray, God bless them everywhere, everywhere, but you feel nothing. But when you enter it, you push. 
Then something happens. And you knew, and you know what? After I felt that push and that thrust inside of me, that intercessor's thrust, I said, I said, you're gonna be all right. And 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 they were, and later on they said, I got the job. I'm doing such and such. It's better. Because of the push. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you pray for, G, for somebody, something has to leave out of you. It's your push. It's your passion. It's the God part of you that wants to see them do better. How many of you want to see your brothers and sisters do better? How many of you prayed for somebody till before you knew it, you were in tears? Just sobbing and weeping. I, I, I never forget another time I was at, at my, 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 my credit union. And, and, and the young lady there was going through a lot of problems in her marriage, in her home. And she was, she was so upset. And, 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 I, and, 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 and she had just gotten promoted to uh, uh, the, uh, a nice position. So I was sitting in her office while she was, at first we just were taking care of some of my business. And so... What she ended up doing was, was, was starting to, to talk to me. As people do, they find out who you are, and suddenly, you know, you become the counselor at large. And so I, I immediately, I listened to her, but when I started praying, tears flowed down. Because I started pushing. Because I wanted her to be better because when she told me her story, I entered into her pain. Do you understand? And the, and the amazing thing was, is that when I entered into that pain, it touched my tear glands and my heart, and I started crying. And, and my head was bowed, and, and it was just me, I thought. I opened my eyes and she was staring at me. And she told me, don't cry. Here shows the bubble over my head. And in that bubble, I didn't say it out to her, but I said it in my head. I'm crying over you. But it didn't matter. I needed to do that. And later on when I encountered her, she was better. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, let me give you another instance. Uh, Garden of Gethsemane. After Jesus had served the Lord's Supper, and, 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 and he went and he prayed, and he prayed so hard till, till he pushed so hard until he pushed blood through his, his, his pores. Who was he praying for? He was praying that something he had to do that, oh God, this is heavy. But I still have to do it. He even said, Lord, take this from me. But he, but, but he was praying for us. And something left him. Intercessors enter into the pain of the person that they're praying for. And when you intercede, the last point on that intercession piece is intercessors intercede. When you intercede, it changes your heart. When you pray for people, it can change your heart about them. Have you ever had to pray for somebody you didn't like? And while you were praying, God changed your heart. That comes out of intercession. L let me move on. I don't see you excited about that. I but here comes a game changer in this story. Jesus said, let the children be filled first. For it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to little dogs. Do you all see this in here? 
Let the children eat first. It's not good to take the children's bread and throw it to dogs. Little dogs. Wow. That's not a compliment, y'all. Let the children be filled first is a direct reference to the Jewish people. The, the scripture says that he was sent to the lost house of Israel. Jesus was sent after Israel, the Jewish people. But here's the truth. The disciples were sent after the world. They evangelized the world. In essence, Jesus was saying that Israel needed the bread first. They needed him first. This line would have been a point of departure for many people. Here is a quote from John Bevere. And it says, Okay, you can slice the pie however you'd like, but it's coming out the same. Jesus called her a dog. I'm glad this woman wasn't an American. You know why? If so, Jesus might have gotten an earful. She might have lashed out. What? Are you calling me a dog? What kind of minister are you? How dare you insult me in this way? I came for help and this is the treatment I get. Neck roll. This is a racial thing, ain't it? Because I'm Greek and you're a Jew. You think you have the right to call me a dog. This is an outrage. You sit there with your staff and ignore a needy woman who's crying out for her daughter. Where is this love you preach about? Oh, I get it. There is no multitude to impress right now. Just you and your staff. So your true colors are showing. You hypocrite. I've had enough. I'm out here. I'm glad she wasn't American. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Isn't that the go-to place? Many times before we will get an understanding, we go into our feelings. You call me a dog and that's where you will stop at. Is everybody paying attention to me? Do you understand that that's an insult? But in that day, that's what they thought of Gentiles. Anybody that wasn't Jewish or worshiping in the proper place, Jerusalem, not in, in, in Samaria or someplace like that, they were considered dogs. Jesus softened it by saying, you're only a little dog. You're not as ugly a dog as the rest of them. You're not as bad a dog as the rest of them. You're just a little dog. So he softened it a little bit. Here is the blessing. Her response is a good example of how to, to, to stop offense. Let's see what she did. If she had been passive or easily offended, she would have lost any hope of reward. And sometimes offense comes to stop you from getting the reward. You get offended. And when you can't, when you get offended by people, they can preach all day, you won't receive from them. Mm -hmm. You'll get busy doing a bunch of stuff, but you won't receive. Because you're in offense. And offense shows up in disinterest. Are you there? And she said, this is the line she said. Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs. Like whatever the children don't eat, them crumbs go to the little dogs. Anybody ever had a pet? A dog in the house. 
they know when it's dinner time, don't they? And they hang out, Chris, around the table. Some of y'all feed them off of the table. You'll take something off and throw it under in that, that, that way. But they also are watchful to see what fall off the table. How many of you know I'm right about that? How many of you know they're good at retrieving what come off the table? It's like that commercial where the, where, the, where the little boy is eating with chopsticks and he's trying to eat this, this, this dumpling and dip it in the, in the bowl and, 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 and it slips from the chopstick, hit the bowl and slides across the table and there is a dog. I don't know what kind of dog he is. He's sitting on the other side of the table and as soon as the dumpling comes, comes flying off the table, he doesn't even move from where he is. He stays right where he is because he's got it all. He know, he's timed it. He knows the way where it's coming from, and all he does is open his mouth, and in one slurp, he takes in the whole dumpling. The crumbs that come off the master's table from the children is good for the little dogs. Second, first she accepted her low place before Jesus by not debating being called a dog. She didn't debate it. Sometimes you want to argue the point. And the point is not the goal. The point is not the goal. You are arguing the point, but what is your goal? What's the real goal? The goal is to get the reward. What is the goal? It's not the debate. And some of you want to debate and you miss the goal. Because you want to win the argument. Now you might win the argument but you lose the war. Because the reward is law. She didn't have time to go after an argument when what she wanted was the reward. Are are y'all getting something? So I'm telling you today, forget the argument, forget the point, get the goal. What you trying to get to? You must know the intent of Satan is to steal, kill, and destroy. And the minute you go into a bunch of uh, 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 redefining, redefining, so it means, it means, it means, it means, and in the meantime, you're not getting what you need. Ooh, that come close to where we all live, don't it? Because we like to win the debate. I won the argument. Hmm. A husband who always wins the argument will soon find himself alone. Have you noticed most of your bosses don't debate you? They don't debate? Anybody have big debates with your boss about work assignments? (laughs) Let's discuss this assignment. (laughs) No, you don't have no big debate. You do what you're told. You grumble, but you do what you're told. You argue, but it's in your head. <laughs> it's in your head. You get tore up and go and kick your desk and throw your pencil across the room, but the door is shut. Second thing about her. She asked Jesus to deal with her on her own low level. She didn't pretend that she was one of the children. She knew who she was in relationship to the Jews. I'm a Gentile. Sometimes you have to come to him on your level. Her maturity showed in the way she handled her response. 
Your maturity shows in the way you handle responses. That shows you're mature. This showed me not only was she an intercessor, but she was mature in the things of God. Oh, God. Maturity tells you when to shut up. When this is not good. This is not worth it. Maturity makes you analyze where you are in relationship to what you're talking about. And you say, I need to leave that alone. But it's a learned thing. It comes out of maturity. How many of you know many of us had to grow up into some stuff? When I was a child, I thought like a child. I acted like a child. But when I became a man, I put away because I matured. Ooh. Wow. It's obvious that she was in relationship with God in spite of being a Gentile. Clark, the theologian, has said this in observation of this woman uh, 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 taking notes of the part of her prayer when she made her appeal. This showed her maturity. This showed her intercession. Number one, it was short. It wasn't a long prayer. And you think you move God by your long saying and your much saying. Sometimes you need to get to the point. A, a specific prayer. Number one, it was short. Number two, it was humble. Number three, it was full of faith. Number four, it was fervent. That means when she prayed it, she pushed and believed it. Oh, my God. Number five, it was modest. She asked specifically for what she needed. My daughter. I know we think we need to do scattergun praying. Heal everybody everywhere. But, but it's your daughter that's sick. Pray for your daughter. Pray for your son. Pray for your brother. Pray for your wife. It was respectful. Don't you call me no dog. You just give me what I asked for respectful so she honored it was rational the reason why it was rational because she said yes but the little dogs get the crumbs that fall off the master's table they, they get the, the crumbs from the children that's a rational spiritual reality it takes something to stand back and look at it and say, oh, yeah, God, all the bread don't stay on the table, though. Sometimes I've gotten blessed by other people's, other folks' prophecy. That bread was for them. They were called out. But because I was near the table, Because I was near the table and I heard it. It, it, it birthed faith in me and I received from it. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Anybody ever stole something that way? Yeah. You got a crumb that fell off. Yeah, yeah. Lou, the Lord showed me that he's going to bless you and multiply you. I, I see a, a, a big number in front of you with a bunch of zeros behind it. And, and, you know, and I see that. God, the zeros keep coming. The zeros keep coming. The zeros keep coming. Yeah, and somebody sitting next to him say, I see them all. I, I see them all. I see them all. I see them all. And you know what? Before you know it, you're starting to claim, I see them zeros. I see. Am I in the right house? Anybody ever heard somebody getting something good and you say, oh, that's me too, shoot. You claim it as by right, and you didn't do wrong because according to this principle, you have a right to some of the stuff that comes off of the table. 
So every prophecy you hear from now on in, you'll be listening real good. She relied on the last one is the next one is she relied on the mercy of God. And number nine, she was persevering. She relied on the mercy of God. And sometimes in your prayer, I, I believe that sometimes we don't we we many times we don't we don't we don't we don't rest on the mercy of God. God, I'm throwing myself on you as as unworthy, but but you're worthy. I'm resting in your mercy. I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm not even worth it in some case. And, and, and I'm just fresh out of not doing something right. But, but I'm resting in your mercy. You still can pray. You still have a right to claim something. Resting in his mercy. And then persevering. You push it. You push it. She knew who Jesus was was and honored him she was tenacious and she didn't quit so the outcome is she received a full reward everybody say full reward, full reward. what was that reward yeah how do we know that then he said to her for this saying It's what you say. When she knew she had a right to claim something under the table, not on it, he said, for your saying. You don't have it because you don't say it. And what you do say is argumentative. It doesn't produce a war. But if you say something that lines up with faith, for your saying. Oh, you're not getting this today. You will realize soon that it's, it's, it's what comes out of your mouth that makes a difference. Because it shows what's in your heart. It shows your level of maturity. It shows that you've been intimate with God. It shows that you trust God. It shows that you know what God loves and what God's desire is, is that none would perish for your saying. For your saying. For your saying. I, I, I can't say what Emily needs to say. I can't say what Yvonne or Yvette needs to say. For your saying. Yes. Yes. If you confess you in pain all the time, you'll be in pain. For your saying. If you confess you're sick all the time, you'll stay sick. For your saying. What if you decide, I'm going to say something else. For your saying, go home. The demon has gone out of your daughter. And it was gone when Jesus said it was gone. Because she found Jesus hiding out, but he couldn't be hidden. So when she found him, she said something to him. When you find Jesus, talk to him. Say something. Say something because he's able to help. Some of the stuff that has your attention cannot deliver you. But when you're in his presence, by way of this, say something. You want something, say something. My God. You want to commiserate about everything that's wrong, but he's told you for your saying. My God. Go your way. The demon is gone. And when she had come to her house, 
she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. Her humble faith filled submission, and I'm through, brought the victory. Nothing appeals to Jesus more than faith coupled with humility. Don't act like you all of that. Or you get gotten puffed up in who you are and what you think you're able to do, and you forget that 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 it's 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 the humble person that receives. And the scripture has said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you. Humble yourself. Oh my God. Humility and faith wins the reward every time. So, here's my closing statement. By step getting easily offended and get the reward. By step not being first and get the reward. By step not being on the top of the table but on the floor underneath, get the reward. Do not be ready to always argue the point. Get the reward. Even when it seems you have been dishonored, you honor and get the reward. You deter. I'm going to honor anyway. Mm. I don't have a right to dishonor. I, I know it, it, this ain't good, but I'm still going to honor. Get the reward. <laughs> Get past the feelings and get the reward. Remember, you might not get the loaf on the top of the table, only the crumbs that fall under the table, but they are enough to get the healing. It's enough healing in the crumbs. Get the reward. You don't need the whole loaf. Some people think they can't make it unless I got the whole ship. But Paul would later say, in line up with this type of thinking, some made it on boards and broken pieces of a ship. But they all made it. And so to that I say, float on. Just one piece is enough for salvation. Blessings to you today. We thank you today, God. We thank you today, God. That honor rewards. And so we get to claim our reward because we honor you. We honor in the places where honor is due. We don't selectively honor. We just honor because you told us to. And we love you today. We love you today for it. We love you for reminding us of who we are and what we have in you. We thank you for a Syrophoenician woman from scripture who has come down through thousands of years teaching us to bystep our feelings and get the reward. Thank you, God. Thank you that in this house we shall see a birthing force, a bursting of honor and reward. Reward in every corner from side to side and front to back. Because people exalt you first. And so we bless you for it. And we thank you for it. And we give you the glory for it. Thank you for an intercessor's heart that tells us to push. Push into the pain of somebody else. So God, we love you today. 
We thank you for Dove Church. We thank you that we're being rewarded because we've been honorable. You keep us and we thank you for it. Now bless this people in Jesus' name. Amen. Put your hands together. Give God a good praise in the house. Praise the Lord again. To all of our listeners, we thank God for you, and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you, and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website at dovechurch.org slash giving, which takes you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.